Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Wassalatu wassalam ala sayyidil anbiya Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man ihtada Wa man ihtada bihadihi ila yawmidin amma ba'd Fakar qala Allah ta'ala fi muhkamit tanziri wal furqan al majid Wa huwa asdaqul qailin الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله ثم لا يتبعون ما أنفقوا منا ولا أذى لهم أجرهم عند ربهم ولا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث روي أن سهل من سعد رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الله تعالى إن الله تعالى كريم ويحب الكرمة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين جماعة المسلمين respected brothers elders sisters in Islam as our duty, we start off praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As without a doubt Bila shakin Without a single iota of doubt None deserve to be praised except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For each and every favors that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon us From the very beginning of the day We open our eyes until the end of the day, the evening, when we close our eyes Each and every breath within those time Is all from the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala As He ought to be praised And secondly, we send darood and salam On our Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam His household, his companions And all believing men and women who follow them until the end of time In our reminder today, we know we are in this blessed month of Ramadan And year come and year go, we hear many reminders Some reminders we may hear multiple times over and over again But we, have we ever asked ourselves, why do we keep hearing these reminders? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself remind us in the Quran about the purpose of reminders. فَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That remind, for really reminders, it is beneficial for believers. For those who have iman. So today I would like to, for us to look into a lesson from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this lesson as much as it has to do with out of Ramadan in our life but precisely focus on the aspect of it in Ramadan because there are so many things and so many virtues and so many characteristics in the month of Ramadan that we can indulge ourselves in so many actions that we can carry out that is all rewarding this month of Ramadan is blessed in that way but if we were to look at one hadith Narrated by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu The cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ajwadu al-nas Wa ajwadu ma yakunu fi Ramadan Aw kama qala He said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He was the most generous person and even so, even so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He will be the most generous in the month of Ramadan So he was generous entirely throughout the year But in the month of Ramadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was even more generous So this aspect of generosity In the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It is a lesson for you and I At the ending of this hadith 
Dua lengkap riwayat from Abdullah bin Abbas radhiyallahu anhu. It terminated the hadith and he mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam generosity. It used to be like that of the heavy wind. Like we know outside today, it's very windy. He used a comparison to say Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was like that of a nourishing wind. Whenever it passes, whenever it blows heavy, it doesn't miss any any leaves on the tree. It doesn't miss anything. As we know, when the time of a tornado or is a hurricane, and those wind pass, the heavy wind it takes everything in its way. So you say Rasulullah some generosity was like that. It will, he will not miss anyone. He will not look at the face of someone and just give because he likes this person more, or he will not give to this person because he doesn't like him. Rasulullah some would spend. It came such to such an extent. That the Sahabi or Allahu Anhum they mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will spend as such that he has no fear of poverty. His spending will be so much without the fear of poverty. And another narration mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam will spend so much that he will make a rich man feel like a pauper. Rasulullah sallam because of his spending, he was generous in his ways, and even more so in the month of Ramadan. And when do we ask ourselves, we look at ourselves, we ask ourselves the question, what is a generous person? We see many people, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with wealth and they spend. But do they spend in the correct way, in the correct manner? Many people we utilize our wealth, but instead for us to be generous, we're just being extravagant. We'll be in, we're conducting the aspect of israf, wasting. And that's that's the main line of difference between a person being generous or a person spending his money without being generous. A generous person, he spends his wealth in places that will benefit others and places that is needed. But a person may spend money. On the contrary of this, he spend money where it is not needed. He spend money on things that is not beneficial. And in this regard, he wastes his money. Even though he may think to his mind that it is generosity. Today, look at our life. Each one of us, we've seen aspect of this. We purchase many things just because our eyes see it and we like it. But do we really have the need for it? The generation that we are living in, it is a sad reality. We do shopping with the eyes, not because of the needs. So that thin line between. Generosity and between a person just spending, between a person wasting his money, is what will be able to differentiate us between gaining our rewards. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also remind us of the opposite of generosity of a person who's not being generous. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "لا يجتمع الشح والإيمان في قلب واحد أحد في قلب واحد أبدا." That iman, faith. And stinginess and miserliness will never be found in the heart of one person ever. It can never be combined in the heart of one human being, in a Muslim. So these are two qualities: a person of iman shall never be a person with stinginess and miserliness. Shall never be a person with greed, that he only wants and he hoards his wealth and without spending it. But iman, a person with true iman, he knows that the wealth he have. It is an amanat that trusts from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and he spend. So Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he remind us about this to show us that we need to rectify our iman that when it comes to spending and spending the way of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, when it comes to us being generous, we don't hold back. But we don't hold back in the good things, not that we don't hold back in things that is wasteful. But yes, when we talk about generosity, as I've been mentioning, I'm talking about wealth. But as human being, as Muslims, our generosity go far beyond just using wealth. Spending in wealth and being generous with our wealth is just one aspect and one characteristic of this point of generosity. The month of Ramadan is a time for us to utilize our life to be generous, and I would like to highlight a few of these points of being generous in the month of Ramadan, and even after the month of Ramadan, we can continue it. And for a mu'min, the first aspect of generosity is that we be generous towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
We be generous towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we be generous to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This comes in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without ascribing any partner to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not even what they classify as shirk asgar, this min the minor shirk. And the minor shirk comes under that aspect, they say as riya, show. You're doing something for show. You pray in salah, oh, because shirk so and so is watching me. Because this shirk is looking at me, I'm praying in salah, and I was a pious person. You bring an aspect of riya of show. So instead of doing it for Allah, you're doing it to show another person. Even to that minute detail, we need to be generous with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we do it solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the aspect comes, it comes with our ikhlas and niyyah. Innamal a'malu bin niyyat. That action is according to one intention. Then the second aspect of generosity is that we be generous towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We show our generous towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved of Allah. And it is, it is no doubt, it is a no-brainer that once we're here, we have to be generous towards Allah. It automatically includes Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. They go hand in hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the Quran, Qul in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْمِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَكْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ Let's say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if you love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِ Then you follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it goes hand in hand. So we have to be generous with Rasul Torah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by following him, obeying him, practicing his sunnah, and show our love for him. That without any hesitation, we are not afraid to say that we are followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the third point of generosity is that we be generous with our heart. We be generous through our heart, at the level of our heart. That whatever we do, whatever spending we do, whatever good deeds we do, we are with a clean heart. It comes back again towards our ikhlas, towards our sincerity, that our heart is devoid of any outward negativity, devoid of anything that will hinder us from what from the action that we are doing, the remembrance of Allah, the salah, that when we stand in salah, we all know the famous example we always give, that the person when they stand in salah, he then remembers all these things that he forget out of salah before. Maybe the whole week he was searching for something, he never found it. When he stand in his salah, the memory jogged back, he's like, oh yeah, I left that thing under the, under the bed. He's in salah, but his mind wander away. So we need to be with a clean heart. And then the fourth is that we be generous through our kindness. We be generous through our kindness. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طلق وفي رواية بوجه طليق that don't consider any good action to be minute and to be small even if it is to meet your Muslim brother with a smiling face. And we know the month of Ramadan, it is a time where because we're fasting, we know they say a hungry man is an angry man. So we are fasting in the month of Ramadan, and it is a time when because of our hunger, we tend to lose our temper much easier. We tend to become angry over small details. The, the husbands, they may become angry at their wife for something. Maybe the food did not taste as he wanted it to be taste, as he, wanted, he was expecting it to taste. So uh, in the month of Ramadan, these are things that we tend to show kindness. We have to try and show our kindness. We be generous through our kindness. And this generosity towards kindness comes towards both insan, towards mankind, and towards animals. And these are aspects that we are generous not only in the month of Ramadan, even out of Ramadan. But I'm mentioning it because the month of Ramadan, we know rewards are multiplied much more. And these are things that we should try to better in the month of Ramadan. So that out of, Ramadan, out of Ramadan, it becomes easy to, for us to practice. And then, the fifth point is, as we all know, we always mention when we talk about generosity, is that of wealth. That whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with, you spend in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ 
anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al jannah our health and our wealth allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a trade for us in exchange for jannah so our wealth we have the trust of wealth we have we have to spend to gain the jannah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we spend in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for beneficial aspect and last but not least the other the last characteristic i'll mention of generosity is that we be generous when it comes to deen we be generous with this deen that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with we spread deen towards those that don't have iman or even within the muslims themselves we have those that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed with knowledge they spread deen to those that don't have the knowledge they spread ilm to those that don't have knowledge as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi said the hadith A godwatun aw rawhatun fi sabilillah khayrun min ad-dunya wa ma fiha that a morning and evening in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than this whole world of whatever it contain you go out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is going to be much more rewarding than whatever this whole dunya and whatever this whole world contain and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advised us that ali radiyallahu anhu that when he was sending him out to the battle rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him wallah لا يهديك الله في يدك رجل واحد خير خير لك من حمر النعم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام that by Allah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide one person with your hand by the means of you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide one person to Islam it is better for you than a whole cattle of red camels and red camels in those times in Saudi as we know was like the Lamborghinis and the Ferraris that we have today it was of value so Rasulullah sallallahu said for one person to be guided by your hand is better than a whole cattle of these camels to show the generosity of what we have with our deen how important it was and this advice was given at the time when he was being sent towards the battle towards fighting the people to bring them towards Islam against the people who rebel against the Muslim but this was the advice Rasulullah sallallahu gave not that you first go and shed blood but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guiding one person to Islam is better than whatever you're going to do whatever you're going to fight for you're going to fight for Islam but instead of shedding blood to guide one person to Islam is better so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that this month of Ramadan let us be generous with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with let us not be stingy and miser with what gift we are given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether it is good health whether it is good eloquent speech whether it is wealth we can always assist someone we can always help and give charity or give, be generous with whatever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with with whatever little it is and it doesn't matter how much we give because rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the most beloved action to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most beloved and the most best action accepted to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that action which is done continuously even if it is less so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our effort in this month of ramadan may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we can complete the month of Ramadan in good health and strength. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our past sins and our future sins that we, we, if we are to commit any. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all the marhum and all the sick person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant shifa. Ameen. Wa akhiru da'wan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inna alhamdulillah Inna alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi Wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina Wa min sayyati a'malina Man yahdihillahu falamudilla lah Wa man yudlilhu falahadiya lah Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu Arasalahu allahu bilhuda wa deen al-haq ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون أما بعد فيا عباد الله قد أمن الله تعالى في محكم التنزيل والفرقان المجيد فقال تعالى إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال عليه الصلاة والسلام في الحديث من صلى علي واحدة صلى الله بها أشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد 
وعد الله من خلفاء الراشدين راشدين المهديين أبي بكر الصديق وعمر الفاروق وعثمان في النورين وعلي المرتضى وعن كل صحابة الباكين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غورا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير أمتي قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله فاعلموا أن الله تعالى أمركم بالثلاث وينهاكم عن الثلاث فقال تعالى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله يذكركم وارعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله Thank <laughs> you.